Oh, hi guys. How you doing? We're in St. Martin at the moment in the Caribbean. Uh, a few more days and then we will leave to go to the Bahamas. Which is exciting for us. It's a half a world away that we've sailed to get here. I know for a lot of you guys in the US, the Bahamas is your back backyard, but uh, we've come a long way. And Jupiter's brought us all this way. And in fact, there's been a lot of interest about Jupiter uh, because he's a bit of a rare breed. A 48 foot performance catamaran made of aluminum or aluminium, whichever country you come from. So we get a lot of questions about Jupiter and quite a lot of interest actually. So one of the biggest advantages, I guess, apart from a strong hull, yet it's light. One of the other big advantages is the cost. Now, if you were to have this welded up, perhaps in the US or Europe or even Australia, and you paid other people to do it, that's not going to be cheap. But where the designer builds these in Philippines, it is. And you can get this boat, 48 foot, world cruising catamaran, very strong, stiff and reliable, for about 300,000 US. That's brand new, custom to your likings. Mast, engine, sails, electronics, batteries, everything. You can't beat that, hey? That's the only way I've been able to cruise, because I could afford that. I mean, that was a struggle, but I made it. So yeah, people want to know information about where, how, and... Six years ago, when I had that built, I wasn't doing videoing. Uh, I've got a lot of pictures though, and some crappy little videos. They're all on my computer. I could show them to you if you like. If you if you got the patience, stick around. I'll show them to you. Yeah, let's go. Alrighty. So, Jupiter Two is a Cyber Forty Eight designed by Tim Mumby and it's commonly called a Mumby 48 because it's his only design that he does. Built of aluminium and it was built in Cebu, Philippines in the town of Carmen. So when I first flew into Mactan which is the airport, it's an island off Cebu City. It just looked so beautiful from the air, the, the water was just so clear. But then you get into the mad traffic and a two hour taxi ride to the little township of Carmen. And the instructions he gave me were pretty basic to try and find where he is. The turn off after the township of Carmen, I think it was the second road on the right. Take it down to the beach. Turn right on the dirt road, follow it for five kilometers until you see the mast sticking out of the mangroves. And I couldn't believe that that actually worked. Those basic instructions actually worked. But it was such a beautiful environment, it's very provincial Philippines. So I just couldn't believe when I got to this boatyard, there was maybe five or six Mumbi 48s sitting in the yard. Some were stored, they were but owned by other people and stored in his yard. Some were having some work done and some were being built. But these are just such amazing boats and to be sitting in the middle of a mangrove forest in, in, in provincial Cebu. And I was just blown away by this design. I'd been searching the second hand market for so long and I, I was fairly green to to multi hulls, I didn't really know what I should be looking for, but over a few years that I was looking to buy, I educated myself on the basics for a performance, and that is skinny hulls, high bridge deck clearance, streamlined cabins, dagger boards. So, anyway, across the water from the first yard. We took a, a dinghy across and there is the weld up shed and now in this shed he had three catamarans being built. So these start from uh, 
piles of sheet aluminium and T-section and not much else you know a little bit of pipe work but it's amazing to see a pile of aluminium sitting on the floor turn into these beautiful boats so they start off with uh, bulkheads lining up bulkheads in a, uh, a framework just temporarily welded to keep them square and then they add the stringers and next comes the plating the the hull plating and the top side plating and they bend this sheet aluminium by hand with a a roller wheel <laughs> it's amazing and these were all young young fellas the young well they're, they're probably age 15 16 you know into their early 20s uh, were making these boats so these are local provincial young kids they've all got families by the time they're about 16 17 18 years old um, and earning a good wage for the area a good wage and being taught a skill that will set them up for life so once the hulls are completed then he rolls them over and welds in the rest of the bulkheads like the the uh, bulkheads that go right across between the hulls. That's the view of the cockpit. That section on the back is the rear cross beam. And you see all these fins that are welded on the back of that. I'll explain what they are in a minute. Look at that bow. Wow. Then afterwards is the deck. First the stringers go on the top and then the decking. Look at these boys, expert MIG welders, these guys. So there's a big issue with welding aluminium, and that is it buckles with heat. It's very easy to warp, and it's very difficult to keep it straight. There's the mast base there, it's compression post starting to look like a boat now all right so that's that rear cross beam again you can see all the fins so every seam that is welded look at that underneath the bridge deck every seam that is welded will buckle if you don't brace it so they weld these tabs just scrap scrap tabs across the seam first every couple of inches which will brace it from buckling and weld in between it and then grind off the tabs and then stitch up the the mess look at all the tabs here on top of the uh, bridge deck cabin so labor intensive so much work and so that turns into that look at that very nice. There's a the cockpit once again. Forward deck area. And that's inside. Cockpit complete. So this is the furniture uh, structure inside the boat. It's all welded as well. And then the boat is finished. And we push it down the ramp and it looks like that. So here comes a little crappy video of uh, when my boat first went in the water and that was on this day where I took this picture. So today, first time I see my boat finished welded in daylight, but it's raining, which is okay, it's just uh, very wet. And last night we moved the boat off the boat ramp which is there, moved it down so that we could float her today at lunchtime at high tide, but I don't think the tide is high enough or the, we didn't push it down far enough, so it doesn't look like we will float her across the other side today, maybe tonight at midnight again. But at least now we can see her in the daytime. Already have crew member. 
in the helm seat. And these are center boards, the dagger boards, I should say. Underneath there is the rudders. And yes, there are four of each because there's another boat over there. We've got to do our first ferry job. Uh, I don't want to take you out in the rain, but this is the view that my Captain Spider can see when sitting in the helm. Well, that was embarrassing. A little younger and slimmer back then, wasn't I? So anyway, the boat is floated across from the work, uh, from the weld-up yard across to the other yard, which is where they do the fit-out. So here's a picture. This actually wasn't Jupiter because these already got a mast on, but um, this was a different boat. But this is what they do. They float them across, put a trailer underneath, jack it up, and haul it out with a block and tackle. And ready for fit-out. Some folks ask me uh, why the name Jupiter 2. Um, so this will give you an example. Uh, this photo actually inspired me for Jupiter 2. I always wanted something to do with a spacey sort of name. It was my first love, you know, after dinosaurs, before girls. Anyway, um, Jupiter 2, if anyone remembers the old TV program, Lost in Space. That was the name of their ship. Okay, so fit out begins. Oh, welcome aboard. Jupiter, Saturn, or... Anyway, I've got about another week. 